Let's do one last inequality before we call it quits for the day. And this guy, it's not necessarily quadratic, but you can still use quadratic methods and factoring to help you figure this guy out. I want to figure out where is this guy greater than or equal to zero. Well, first let's convert this to just an equation. And when I do that, I have this guy. 4x to the third minus 8x squared minus x plus 2 is equal to zero. Now we need to find those gatekeepers, which means we need to find out where does this guy equal zero. In these other problems that we've had, they've been quadratic, which means they have two solutions when I have them set equal to zero, and I've got two gatekeepers. In this case, I've got something that's to the third power, so I have the potential to have three gatekeepers, three critical values, which would then separate my number line into four intervals. So let's see, how am I going to factor this guy? Well, Factor by grouping is always good when you've got four terms. In this first group, 4x squared is a common factor. When you factor that out, you have x minus 2. In the second group, the common factor, well, it doesn't look like there is anything, but remember, I'm anal, and I don't like to lead off with a negative. So we factor out the negative 1, and then what's left over is x minus 2. Since these factors are the same, I can factor that out front. So x minus 2, and then I have 4x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, this 4x squared minus 1 can still factor a little bit further, so let's go ahead and do that. So 4x squared minus 1 factors as 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. So let's see what our critical values are. Here I get x is equal to positive 2, x equals negative 1 half, and x equals positive 1 half. Now when it comes time for doing the sign analysis, I have three factors I'm going to write down. I've got x minus 2, I have 2x plus 1, and I have 2x minus 1. But We have to see what happens whenever I put all of these factors together. Since these guys are all multiplied together, it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. So we have three key values that we're concerned with. So let's make sure that we divide this up appropriately. Now my key values occur at 2, negative 1 half, and 1 half, but you've got to make sure you do these guys in order. When I do these in order, I get negative 1 half is the leftmost one, positive 1 half, and then 2. So we've got four intervals, and I just want to worry about doing the signs. We can do that. When you have x minus 2, his gatekeeper is over here at 2. Notice how all of these guys have positive lead coefficients, which means on the left side of their gatekeepers, they will be negative, and on the right side, they will be positive. 2x plus 1, what's his gatekeeper? Well, that guy was x equals negative 1 half, so we're 0 right here, negative on the left, positives on the right, and something very similar to the 2x minus 1. His gatekeeper, you see, matches up with x equals 1 half. So he's 0 right here, negative on the left, and positive on the right. See, all we're doing here is looking at the sides. That's all I need to worry about. I don't have to plug in all these numbers and deal with x to the third and 8x squared. I don't have to do that. Now I'm going to look at what happens when I have the whole product here. What's negative times negative times negative? the result of that is going to be negative. That means that anything that I plug in less than negative one-half is going to give me a negative. You don't believe me? Plug in numbers. Have a good day. Here, negative times zero times negative is zero. Then here, negative times positive times negative. We're positive inside here. You have another zero right here. Negative times positive times positive is negative. You have your 0 at 2, 
All of these are positive, so that's going to be positive as well. Now look back at your original statement here so we can see what we're looking for. This greater than or equal to zero meant that I was looking for I was looking for positive values. So I've got my sign chart down here. Where are my positive values? My positive values happen right here and right here. So what intervals do those correspond to? That corresponds to the interval from negative one half to positive one half. Now am I including these guys? If you look at the original inequality, just to make sure we're understanding this, the original inequality just said greater than, not equal to. So since it was greater than but not equal to, I don't get to include these values themselves, so I'm going to use parentheses. But then I have to join this using that union symbol with the other part here, which goes from 2 to infinity. So this right here will be my interval notation for the solution set. Well, let's look at this in terms of, in terms of the graph. I want to make sure that we understand the connection that we have between the graph and the inequality itself. So let's, uh, let's come up here and look at this guy. If I graph 4x to the third minus 8x squared minus x plus 2. Now I probably need to change the graphing window here. Let's go from negative 1 to 3. Let's say the y minimum is negative 20 and the y max is let's say 50 with the y scale of 5. Let's see if this is something nice. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Now you can see here where are my values positive? Well, there's a small little section right here where it's just creeping above the x-axis. It goes back below, but then it goes above again. So we can see that between these two values and then greater than what looks to be 2 matches up. Now you look at the solutions that we have. Between negative 1 half and 1 half matches up, and greater than 2 also matches up. Well, let's go back and let's turn this into a logic statement. So where is this guy greater than 0? And remember, when we do logic statements, change your window from y min, uh, y min to be 0 and the y max to be 2. So there's the negative 1 half to 1 half, and there's the 2 to infinity. So everything matches up here. Perfect.